Hello everyone, this is James Quick, Microsoft Technical Evangelist here in South Florida. On the screen right now you can see my contact information. My Twitter handle is at jquickwit. My email is jaquick at microsoft.com. And the local meetup here in South Florida is the Miami Fort Lauderdale Windows App Developers. So what I'm here to talk about today is adding support for REST APIs in your App Studio project. So the focus of this summer for me, one of the focuses is adding additional support for App Studio projects. So if you're not familiar with App Studio, I would recommend kind of taking a look at it and getting a feel for what it is. Really, really briefly, it's kind of a drag and drop tool for building Windows Phone apps. The most important and coolest thing about App Studio in my mind is its ability to generate source code. So once you create a project in App Studio, you can then uh, pull down the source code in Visual Studio and edit it how you see fit. So again, what I'm talking about today is adding support for REST APIs, which is not uh, built into App Studio, but given that source code, you can adapt the code to support REST APIs. So in App Studio, let me just come over to the main homepage. So this is the homepage for App Studio. It's appstudio.windows.com. And what we're gonna do specifically today is we're gonna use App Studio to build basically what I call um, like a template or a or a shell. So a shell is probably a better term. So we'll use App Studio to create a dynamic collection and we'll organize the layout for a couple of different pages and set the bindings and then we can export and generate that source code to then go in later and uh, customize the data source to come from a REST API. So let's go ahead and get started in App Studio. Again on the home page here and I'm going to click start new project and then I'll choose an empty app and there we go so create and what we want to do here is we want to add for one of these sections we want to add a collection and a collection is, is kinda of like a database so let's go ahead and add it let's give it a name we'll call it in theaters because I want this I want to display a list of movies that are in theaters from the Rotten Tomatoes API um, then I want to make sure that it's dynamic uh, this just makes it easier for us um, in the code um, in the source code so then I want to add the default columns here and I'll change them a little bit so these are all columns for our database basically and title I'm good with and then I'll do rating instead of subtitle image URL is fine and then I'll do synopsis instead of description and it's got a name it's dynamic and then it's got these four columns these four columns are important uh, along with the name so you'll see those those two things kind of referenced in the in the source code so keep those in mind uh, so I'll go ahead and confirm this and I want to come up to the top and just give my app a name so rotten tomatoes and then I'll save and now I want to go in and edit that collection that we just created so I'll click edit and instead of adding data to this database, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to worry about these two separate pages that we have here, the layout for each of those pages, and then the bindings for the controls on each of those pages. So the first page we have here is basically going to be a list page. So it's going to have a list of all of the data in our collection. And again, instead of using, uh, instead of adding data here, we're going to switch this in code to get data from the Rotten Tomatoes API. Um, so this first page you can play around with these layouts I've played around with several of them and this one just seems to work the best for now so I'll choose this one here the fourth from the right and then I want to set the binding so the title obviously will be set to the title column the subtitle will be set to the rating column and then the image will be the image URL so that's gonna be the list page and then the details page here we could choose a layout for it as well and uh, pretty similarly want the title to be set to the title property the description to be to the synopsis now and then the image to the image URLs, URL as well so again on the list page we're displaying title rating and image uh, for each one of the movies and then on the details page when you select a movie 
you're going to display the title, the synopsis, and the image as well. So let me save that. And there's a bunch of different things you could do in AppStudio. You could add more sections and change the themes, change the tiles, your publish info and stuff like that. I'm going to keep this pretty simple. So that's all I really wanted um, for, for now. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this. And then I'll click Generate. And we want to generate for Windows Phone 8.1 and Windows 8.1. This is what we call a universal app. And let me click generate and I'll kind of talk about that in a second. So this will give us support with um, the least amount of code possible to target both platforms, Windows Phone and Windows 8.1. So after it gets done generating, I don't know if you saw, it was pretty quick, but it had a loading bar here. If I scroll down, I can see download source code. If I expand this, then there's a link here for Visual Studio 2013 uh, update two. So you will need the newest update for Visual Studio to be able to support these universal apps. So if you don't have that, you're gonna need to go ahead and download it. And if you already do, then you are good. And we can go ahead and click this download arrow to the left of that. And I'll click download. And I want to save as, and it's a zip file so far. And I think I've already got, let me delete the previous one. And that one. So I'm going to save this zip file, app.zip, to my desktop. Hopefully. All right, let me save this as app dot, or app2.zip. All right and then I can open that folder and then I can extract everything here so app 2 will be a folder on the desktop <clears throat> and within that folder is going to be the Visual Studio project that has all the source code that we care about and that's what we're going to use in part 2 uh, so just to show you really quickly let me open up this app 2 folder and there's the appstudio.sln, so a Visual Studio solution file, which would open up the project. And because this is a universal app, there's these four different projects, uh, one for Windows, one for Windows Phone, one for the shared folder, and one for shared data. So that wraps up part one. Again, in part two is where we're gonna actually open up that source code and make our changes to get our data from the Rotten Tomatoes API. So stay tuned for that.